Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev, where today we embark on one final journey before stepping into a world where GameMaker has finally received its 2.3 update. That's right, today we're going to build a game from scratch and continue working on it all month until completion. Well, maybe not release level completion, but pretty complete. This game will also be constructed entirely within GameMaker, with no help from any third-party programs. And so to start, we'll keep things simple by first focusing on player-based controls and features. Sounds like a plan, so let's proceed to the beginning of the end of GameMaker 2.25. To start, we needed a hero sprite. I wasn't sure what to go with here, but I wanted to keep the graphics basic. I thought about an ice cream bar since it's still summer, but ended up with, uh, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of an abominable snowman, so we'll go with that. It's a tiny yeti. Next, we needed a little warp tile, which technically has nothing to do with the player, but it's still pretty important, so I went with getting the sprite done anyway. Which reminds me, we should probably cover what type of game we're making here. Well, uh, this idea was slightly inspired from watching a game of Fall Guys. During the memory match minigame, I witnessed players trying to sabotage others by putting them off the correct tile, to which I decided to do something similar but kick it up a notch. Only the point of this project is to knock the enemies into certain marked tiles using a baseball bat. So with the sprites drawn up, it was coding time. First up was a script to generate our warp tiles. The script would run through the game board, which is broken up into 16x16 16 cells. A cell is randomly selected and a warp tile slash pad is spawned in the corresponding location. Then to make sure warp tiles weren't overlapping, I added a collision check to the pads. If a pad already exists in the place that they are spawned, that pad is then destroyed and a replacement is randomly created elsewhere. Not a foolproof plan, but given the circumstances of our project, it would be good enough. And so several warp pads would now spawn on load, which is all they really had to do for now. So next it was time to move on to the player code. But before we could get to the code, we would first need a bat sprite for our yeti friend to wield. We'd also need a nice swipe effect just for that added pizzazz. With those drawn up, I created a bat object and stuck it to the player. And the angle of the bat would follow the direction of the mouse with added depth conditions for some good old low res immersion. A few test wiggles showed everything working just as we needed, so it was back to the code to make the wiggle a little dangerous. State and state time variables were added to the player, and using a switch would help determine our state behaviors. The default state would allow the player to walk like normal, and the addition of a left click check would allow the player to shift into the attack state. However, while in the attack state, the player simply becomes a husk for the true hero, the bat. When the player enters the attack state, the bat also enters its own attack state. But, plot twist, the only difference between the bat states would be the position of the bat. And to make sure the position was relative to the direction of the mouse in relation to the player, the angle would be based off the state of the player's image x scale, which would be based off the mouse's position relative to the player character. <laughs> then, while in the attack state, the bat would display a swipe effect for roughly 10 frames to, again, add some pizzazz. And finally, a hitbox object was created, which would spawn in the player's left click event. Indeed, in the end, the power was in the hitbox. Always has been. Anyway, the results were, well, passable. The immediate shift of bat angles plus the swipe sprite helps sell the swing effect without actually animating anything. It's a solid start to what'll hopefully be a nice, calm, and familiar project. And next time we'll focus on the player's opposition as well as continuing to work on those warp pads. But for now, that brings us to the end of today's episode of Let's Dev. So leave a like if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Leave your thoughts on our progress in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.